Okay, here we are with the early prototype of the DVB-S2 beacon in the, at the bench in the remote lab, even though we're not remote. This PC here, this little, this pink one, is a fairly powerful x86 machine, and it's set up to run GNU Radio Companion, and it's equipped with, at the moment, uh, Blade RF, which is uh, transmit and receive SDR with adequate bandwidth for our purposes. The Blade RF is hooked up to one of these antennas. The rest of these antennas are hooked up to various receivers. Um, one of them is the spectrum analyzer, which you can see is showing nothing at the moment. Another one is the receiver card that's plugged into the PC called Aperture, which is behind the bench. And this is its receiver. and It's frozen now because there's no signal. And the third receiver is running on this Surface laptop and it is actually a mini tuner running the mini tune software and it's also showing no signal and uh, just noise on the uh, on a constellation diagram this screen up here is attached to the pink computer called Hello Kitty and I can run Mini Radio Companion and it'll automatically load the flow graph I was using last which is the the transmit demonstration flow graph from uh, GNU Radio with a few modifications have changed the program material and uh, swapped out the SDR sync for the one that drives the Blade RF. So all I have to do now is click on start and this flow graph will start up and run and there's the, uh, the signal being generated. It's a little bit weak so I'm going to turn it up here on the, on the screen. You can see there's a nice digital signal coming out from the spectrum analyzer. And the mini tuner is automatically receiving it. This is live video being transmitted over this two inch path from between the antennas. Uh, the other tuner I have to click on to make it receive again. But one, two, three, boom. There it is. If you back up to see both screens, you can see they're both receiving the same program. So the uh, the mini tuner has all sorts of instrumentation. You can see what's going on. You can see it's got full smash carrier lock and uh, symbol rate lock. It's showing RF power between uh, about minus 38. I did that. <laughs> um, carrier, on, carrier on noise message error rate is, or, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what MER stands for in this context, but it's showing about uh, 30 dB, and that's more than adequate. The, this modulation takes about 14 dB, so we're 15 dB over. That's what D15 means. Uh, so it's receiving with excellent results. Uh, this guy here has uh, quality indicators down here. So we've got uh, L95, I think that means signal strength, and quality it's 98%. So it's doing well as well. Of course, over these short paths, that's, that's no surprise. To cover a real uh, path, we'll need a power amplifier and filter antenna to make it work well. For the RF hardware for the prototype, we have a transverter and a power amplifier. Automobile for scale. This is the antenna that we're going to use for the prototype. This is by W6DFW, silent key. This is one of the last batches that he made. And it's uh, so it is a slotted waveguide antenna, and we will need an adapter uh, to go to coax, and that is on the way. We found a, a perfect, inexpensive one on eBay. Now we're going to show you a flow graph that doesn't work. Notice this one has three different file sources all feeding into this one giant BB header block and then going through a very similar looking chain of uh, modulation blocks. Actually those are completely different blocks. They're enabled for variable coding and modulation. So if I, turn, if I begin this Signal. 
that's all you think we're going to get out of that photograph. Now this is a different symbol rate, so I have to tell MiniTuner that my symbol rate is not 6 million symbols per second. It locks. Notice that it's showing a different constellation, but it's a little weird. It's showing count multiple different constellations at different signal strengths. That's because this is actually a, a multiple uh, code rate transmission. But MiniTuner is not smart enough to pick on just one of the code rates, so it's trying to modulate them all and mush them together. And the result is we get a little bit of trying to draw video, but it's never going to see the signal. Well, it's one of the three programs. Well, it's the top third of one of the three uh, programs. Oh, yeah, now I see. You got to hear, and then it's just repeated all the yeah. pieces. Okay, well, we're on the right track. I found three right. PSKs. All right, so we're doing another blind search on a VCM signal, and every time we do a search, it finds something different. 